No, I don't think it was a victory for her. Um, what we know about the deal that they cut um, uh, just an hour ago or so is basically that uh, Europe is now is moving towards the hardline anti-immigration countries. Uh, what they are proposing goes, what I've seen, uh, in the direction of creating a fortress Europe where it's going to be extraordinarily difficult for a persecuted, persecuted refugee from Libya or from Syria to enter Europe in the future. Mm -hmm. And what Merkel wanted to do was not just to have a European refugee policy that would work, but also then one that would be welcoming to uh, people that were fleeing from oppressive governments around the world. And it looks as if the new political bargain in Europe in, on refugees will be basically closed borders. And Frederick, that sounds ideal in theory, a policy that is welcoming but still has the necessary controls in place. But how do you achieve that, especially at a time when these EU leaders meeting in Brussels are facing so much domestic pressure? No, I think that's, that is right, that given political developments in Europe now with elections of the government in Italy, in Austria and in other places, which is firmly taking policy in an anti-immigration direction, it would be extraordinarily difficult to find any type of policies that wouldn't lead to, uh, at least, much more difficulties in entering Europe and taking down the number of refugees that are coming somewhat more. Um, but at the same time, this is, is not what Merkel really wanted. Mm. But F Frederick, uh, Merkel's obviously been under pressure in her own, uh, her own party. Uh, do you think this deal and uh, agreeing to this deal uh, reduces the risk uh, that she's going to be forced out of power in Germany? So from, from that point of view, maybe has uh, some silver lining. Yeah, I think um, this is probably something that is, well, in the first place, is going to make a last over the summer. Uh, I don't think you're going to find he, her, Horst Seehofer, the interior minister that has been in conflict with Merkel over migration policy uh, in the past two weeks. I don't think we're going to see him to resign or to be kicked out of government on migration issues now. Um, but there are many other uh, frictions inside both the coalition between the Christian Social Union and the Christian Democratic Union. Uh, and there's also friction inside the CDU, where a lot of people are watching Merkel right now and seeing that she has lost a lot, lot of that political authority that she had in the past, where a lot of CDU people think that, um, you know, in the last election in September last year, they lost one-fourth of the voters. And with a few more years of Merkel in power, they may lose even more voters next year. So even if this deal itself uh, will... Uh, uh, ensure that Merkel can stay in government, in power for uh, a longer time. The uh, development and the sort of feeling inside these parties is that at some point she has to go. And is there a broader read across from this? If you can come to a deal on migration, can you come to a deal on some of these other structural issues that the European Union has, is talking about at, at the moment? The, the other big one is on the Eurozone and finding ways to sort of improve the entire Eurozone construct and finding ways for uh, uh, how to deal with uh, fiscal and financial crises when they, uh, when they occur. What we've seen uh, and what is going to be discussed also uh, today at the European summit is uh, a broad outline of an agreement between the French and the German governments. Um, I'd say uh, most of what's in there uh, will probably be acceptable to most other Eurozone states. And I think there is an opening right now to achieve something uh, in terms of improving the Eurozone construct and make it more uh, sort of resilient and much more powerful uh, in terms of crises. But we're not talking about sort of this grand reform which is going to uh, make the Eurozone uh, to look like what Emmanuel Macron has wanted to do and uh, create all these sort of fiscal buffers and uh, budget powers that, that many have argued for in the past. 
And Frederick, just going back to the United Agreement that we eventually did get on migration, watching what was going on with Italy was fascinating here because Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte first said, no, we're not signing on to this. Obviously, then there were discussions that did bring him to the table to a point where he said we were happy with the deal. But on this issue of secondary movements of migrants, that has been a concern to Italy, given that they're really the first point to receive so many migrants. How do they move forward on this? Because the EU has said they agree they should take all measures to counter secondary movements of migrants. Is this going to be a tricky one for Italy? Oh, most certainly. And so far, I mean, they haven't really dealt with that issue uh, in, in this new migration uh, deal that uh, came early this morning. Uh, this is something which has to be fleshed out sort of over the next couple of, of, of months. But the, the broader idea is basically that if you, if you close the external border, uh, if you make it far more difficult for any refugee to enter on your, to European soil, well, then the issue of secondary migration will also become uh, less important because it means there are far fewer people that are going to enter Europe. So uh, all those refugees coming on boats to, uh, uh, to Italy uh, and that wants to go up to Germany or perhaps uh, to other countries when there are fewer of those, there will be fewer of secondary migration as well. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.